When it comes to Sasuke Uchiha, he's a character who certainly isn't someone who's afraid to walk the morally gray line when it comes to doing what he feels is best. At times, when he was much younger, Sasuke full on dived into the darkness, engaging in criminal acts to carry out his will, which led to him being placed in jail after Naruto defeated him at the Valley of the Inn. Over 16 years later, Sasuke Uchiha once again finds himself in jail, but this time it's for an entirely different reason. This time, it isn't for punishment for his sins, but instead, it's while on a mission so important that its success could very well save the life of Hokage Naruto, the very same person who pulled Sasuke out of that darkness, and the very same person that Sasuke credits with having saved his life by pulling him out of that darkness. In today's History of Naruto video, we're going to be taking a look at Sasuke's time in prison during the Boruto era while he's on his mission to gather intel that could very well save Naruto's life from the mysterious chakra illness that has befallen him, one that could very well tie back to the time of the Sage of Six Paths. The information is given to us in the newest Sasuke novel. It's called Sasuke Ritsuden, the Uchiha Descendants and the Heavenly Stardust. It's in this novel, which is a follow-up to the Kakashi novel in the very same series, that we see Sasuke willingly place himself in prison while he and Sakura work together to gather scrolls and documents about the Sage of Six Paths that are needed to save Naruto's life. Their mission has taken them to the land where the Sage of Six Paths once called home. Another a nod to the fact that the Boruto era is once again slowly inching closer to discovering more lore about Kaguya's clan. While there, Sakura pretends to be a nurse and Sasuke pretends to be an inmate at the facility. In the scene I'm about to share with you guys, Sasuke is once again in deep thought, working in silence, shoveling with his remaining good arm. While I go over this scene, I want you guys to think about something. Sasuke helped save the world twice. The first time, it should be noted that he did so out of his own selfish ambitions but the second time he did so willingly to help defeat Momoshiki. This same hero, now a father and a husband, finds himself in prison surrounded by people who are a reflection of what his life could have been if Naruto hadn't saved him, which is ironic given Sasuke's mission could very well do the same to save Naruto. The translation from this passage comes from Organic Dinosaur. Normally I wait for the official release, but Viz Media doesn't yet own the license to this novel and given that they've only release six out of the Naruto novels, there's no guarantee that there will be a release of this newest trilogy of novels. Given Organic Dinosaur's extremely amazing track record with her translations, I'm going to be using her translations because she's the most reliable source in the Naruto community, and that's no disrespect to any of the other translators we have, that's just my personal opinion. And it's going to be here I'm going to begin quoting. Inmate number 487, Sasuke. His physical appearance was even more unique given his name. There were no impurities in his monochrome black hair and eyes. His visage was chiseled with fine deep lines. When his face was viewed from the side, the beauty of his nose bridge was striking. When his face was viewed from the front, it was quite apparent that he was the flawless physical arrangement of physical features. No matter what angle his face was sliced from, he was truly picturesque. When viewing him up close, you could certainly expect to question whether or not you were actually the same kind of living being as him. Even though he was naturally born with his physical appearance like that. He was a taciturn and aloof. And despite always acting brusquely and distant like a cat, he also kept attracting attention of everyone around him. Sasuke often gazed outside the window while he handled his chopsticks and his food, which was served on an iron dish that had been squashed flat. He was mixing up and lumping together what he had been served, things like bamboo shoots and bracken, and had formed them into triangular shapes to eat. Despite being an unsociable man, each and every one of his subtle mannerisms seemed to indicate that this particular person might have had a proper upbringing. That aspect of him had unconsciously been seeping out. When compared to the dregs of society, especially amongst the other prisoners who had been gathered here, it was obvious to everyone that Sasuke was clearly different than them. Sasuke, aren't you cold? I'm cold, Sasuke candidly replied. Sasuke rubbed the handle of the shovel in between his palms and his hands and warmed himself with just the small amount of frictional heat that he had just generated. He had been accustomed to harsh environment conditions during missions, but ultimately being cold meant being cold. With his nose turning red, Gigi constantly rubbing his fingers together for warmth, he suddenly cried out with an owl. Oh no, my blister burst, but ah, how lucky. With this, I can head to the medical ward. Is there something going on in the medical ward? 
Don't you know, there's a new female doctor who recently came. She's a beautiful woman who's got a reputation for being kind, you know. Gigi smirked and then added, moreover, she's single. She doesn't have a lover either. Sasuke then reacted by tilting his head to the side, perplexed. How do you know she's single? I mean, she's not wearing a ring. Seeing Sasuke's expression become even more baffled, Gigi came to a realization and said, Ah, I see. He then continued explaining, You came from another country, didn't you? It is the custom of the Ridaku country that when you get married, you exchange rings with one another. Wearing a ring on the fourth finger on your left hand is a sign of a married person. And so that female doctor isn't wearing a ring. Ah, oh no, they're patrolling. Noticing that the patrollers were approaching, making their rounds, Gigi stopped whispering end quote so one thing that i really enjoy about this scene is that in a very subtle way we see sasuke in a bit of arrogance this passage uses free indirect discourse to narrate sasuke's thoughts and feelings using free indirect discourse is a way to use a third person narrative in order to give the main characters thoughts and feelings and emotions while not having them purposely stated sasuke refers to the prisoners as being the dregs of society and even though he's undercover his most subtle mannerisms give him away as someone who came from a different background, which is entirely true. Sasuke was the son of the Uchiha clan leader. If the Uchiha were never massacred, Sasuke would have been continued to be raised in a way that reflected his high status. Instead of just eating the food that's been given to him, Sasuke mixes it together and it almost comes across as if he's looking at the food like, am I really expected to eat this slop? In an earlier part of the passage, Sasuke also knows that his physical appearance makes him stand out because Sasuke is seen by many as being a very attractive man and his mannerisms reflect that of a high class man with pride and dignity. He doesn't look like the typical prisoner which again that's the reason why he stands out. Sasuke doesn't really break his character until the prisoner that he's working beside Gigi starts to talk about Sakura and it's when Gigi notes that he thinks Sakura's single because she doesn't have a ring on her finger that Sasuke begins to break character. Before Sasuke can press things any further he has to back off because the guards are coming. In another video on this novel that I have on the channel, I talk about how Naruto is slowly pulling Team 7 back together again. It's in this scene here that we see Sasuke almost ready to draw a line in the sand when it came to Sakura. After this conversation and later on in the novel, Sasuke makes a ring for Sakura that is made out of Sasuke's own chakra, which Sasuke can track using his ocular powers, meaning that he'll always know where Sakura is. If they weren't on this mission, the idea of Sakura having a ring, sometimes wearing it, but most often keeping it in her pocket or keeping it close to her body wouldn't have been something that would have happened. The other thing I find fascinating about this is that Sasuke, despite being in prison, still seems to have that laser-like focus that's needed to accomplish his goals. At first, he was reluctant to allow Sakura to join him on this mission, and Sakura has to see Sasuke interacting as a prisoner and sleeping behind bars. It's a cruel bit of irony, given how how far Sasuke has come since the start of his redemption journey. He was released from prison due to Naruto's pleas and now he's willingly made himself into a prisoner to save Naruto's life. Sasuke has come full circle and unlike when he left in chapter 699, Sasuke has now allowed Sakura to join him on this journey. So what did you guys think about Sasuke in a way coming full circle? Let me know what you guys think but as always guys if you like anything I had to say don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have an awesome day guys.